I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to the third and final installment in our look at route redistribution. In part two of this series, we began a lab where we have OSPF running between routers one and three. We have an adjacency there, and router one is also running RIP with router two over a separate segment. To give us some networks to work with, both routers two and three have three loopback interfaces, and those networks are being advertised into their respective protocols. So after a successful redistribution of our RIP routes and our directly connected routes on router one into the OSPF process, we saw these four routes appear. They're going to be marked OE2, that is the default, and you can see that also the AD is 110 as we would expect for any OSPF route by default and the default seed metric of a route redistributed into OSPF is 20. Now we're going to go back up to router 1 and take the OSPF routes and our other directly connected segment and put it into the RIP process so router 2 can see them. So let's take a look at that and see if we see any messages like we saw when we put the RIP routes into OSPF. Simply go router RIP, redistribute, connected, and redistribute OSPF1. Don't forget the process number. So we don't get any messages like we saw before. And let's go down to router 2 and see if the redistribution has taken place yet. Remember, RIP takes longer to converge but we've got a pretty small network here, so let's see what we've got. Well, we do have one RIP route here. The connected route on router 1 has successfully been redistributed into RIP, and that's the segment that leads to router 3, but you notice that we don't see the three OSPF routes that we expect to see. Remember these? Let's review that. There are the three networks we want router 2 to see, and we put redistribute connected, and the connected route that router 2 didn't already see was put into RIP successfully. But these are not in there, so let's go down and take another look. Never hurts to look again with uh, RIP. And you can see now the last update came in eight seconds ago, and we still don't see them. So just for fun, clear IP route asterisk, clears the rounding table of all dynamically learned routes. It's a good home lab command too because what that does is it does speed the process up of seeing if your routing changes have taken effect. So let's see if those routing changes have taken effect and they have it. So this is interesting. The redistribution's working because we're seeing one rip route there. We're seeing that connected one so the redistribute connected seems to have worked. What isn't working is the redistribute OSPF1. And why is that? Let's take a look at the routing table as a whole. Here, notice these metrics for OSPF. These routes have a metric of 65. Well, the problem there is, is that when we redistribute OSPF routes into RIP, RIP does not even begin to comprehend a route with a metric of 65. Because remember, when RIP sees a route with a metric of, what, 16, it's considered unreachable. So 65 is real unreachable. What we have to do is set a metric for those routes. And there are actually two ways you can do that. Let's go into router RIP here. And I believe, yeah, default metric is a command that we could use. And let's use iOS help to see the definition of that according to the router default metric and see it even mentions it. Set metric of redistributed routes. So if we set a metric here, and we'll, we'll work with that command first. And what are the options? Well, we don't want to use one too large here. Let's put a default metric of two in and we'll do a save on the way down to router 2. And you can see now that it already sees those routes that it didn't see a moment ago. As soon as we gave the RIP process a default metric that it understood, the routes are here. 
and you can see it even reflects that there's two there's two there's two so you've really got to watch that because the router you know Cisco routers really almost always warn you or tell you something like hey you might want to consider this like when we did the rip to OSPF redistribution and it said hey you know what you've put in is fine but you might want to add the subnets option well here we weren't told anything by the router as far as hey you know the rip process really doesn't understand these OSPF routes so it's something that we have to know so the default metric command is one option for that let me show you another one The other one you might want to use is the metric option in the redistribute command itself. And you can see you set the default metric and notice this one says 0 through 16. So you could set, if you wanted all your OSPF routes to have a metric of 2, you could just put the 2 there and go from there. That would be all you need to do. So we use the default metric command. Matter of fact, let's take that off. And we'll do a quick, we may need to clear this routing table. Nope, it's already gone. So you can see just that quickly without the default metric, the redistribution fails. So what we can do instead is we'll go into the OSPF process here in a moment, or the root process that is. I'm going to take the no uh, redistribute command off originally, redistribute OSPF1, and put in redistribute OSPF1 metric 2. So we'll go down to router 2, take a look around, and the routes are already there again. So we've got to set a default metric or a metric for the routes being taken from OSPF and put into rep. We can do that with the default metric command or actually specify what the metric is at the end of the redistribute command. Always a good idea in Cisco land to know more than one way to do things. Hope you enjoyed this look at route redistribution. I invite you to watch my other YouTube videos here if that's where you're watching them. Also at www.thebryantadvantage.com. It's easier to type than it is to say sometimes. And you can head up straight to the tutorials page if you like. I've got over 250 free Cisco tutorials out there for you as well. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the website.